takes you to listen to this talk, eight people will be diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. But equally, in the next eight minutes, someone could discover the cure to Alzheimer's disease. Today, you could sit here and doze off, maybe think about what you're going to have for dinner tonight, or you can take something from these talks that sparks your curiosity, then in turn take the time to pursue your curiosity and be inspired to take action. It all depends on how you are willing to use your time moving forward. Oftentimes, we hear people say, I don't have enough time for that, or there aren't enough hours in the day for me to possibly get all of this done. But the problem is not how much time we do or do not have, but it's how we are choosing to spend our time. If your priority is social media, then you will spend your time on social media. But if your priority is serving others, you will then spend your time serving others. Our priorities are important. Once we can identify those priorities, we will then have time to pursue our passions. One of my passions is challenging myself to learn new things every day. And my curiosity for the human brain invited me or allowed me to be invited to do a brain dissection at Hershey Medical Center. Let me tell you, it was a humbling experience to see and hold a human brain. I remember thinking, wow, this is someone's every thought, dream, action, and idea throughout their entire life in my hands. Eventually, during this brain dissection, we discovered some spots of uh, darker plaques and signs of neurodegeneration. Now, one interesting thing about the brain um, in these donor brains is that we have no knowledge about who the donor was or what their cause of death was. Luckily, we had Dr. Connor, who's the head of neurosurgery there, to identify those plaques as dark spots leading to Alzheimer's disease. Seeing the actual effect that the detrimental disease has on the human brain fascinated me, and I knew that I had to learn more. So this was where all of my research began, so this was time well spent. I chose to spend all of my free time the following week researching as much as I could about Alzheimer's disease to try to understand it better. In uncovering the effects of this disease, I was made aware of a lot of statistics that truly astounded me. I chose to serve as an advocate for Alzheimer's awareness because not enough people understand the truly detrimental impact that this disease is expected to have on the world's population in the next 20 to 30 years. According to the Alzheimer's Association, one in three people aged 85 and older are expected to be diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Currently, there are five million Americans living with, you know, with Alzheimer's disease. And if the current trends continue, this number is expected to rise to 16 million Americans suffering from Alzheimer's disease by the year 2050. And get this, since the year 2000, deaths from heart disease have decreased by 14%, but deaths from Alzheimer's disease have increased by 89%. These shocking statistics are what began my passion to change the future. With new motivation and a new sense of urgency, I began looking deeper into everything that I could to understand the pathophysiology of Alzheimer's disease. While looking at medical journals, I eventually came across a group of journals that highlighted the link between metformin, which is a drug for type 2 diabetes patients, and Alzheimer's disease. According to an article in Clinical Interventions in Aging, the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease is 50 to 150 percent greater in patients with type 2 diabetes. Metformin is a drug given to type 2 diabetes patients that has been shown to induce this beta amyloid plaque production and inflammation in the brain that leads to Alzheimer's disease. Currently, 
many type 2 diabetes patients are prescribed insulin sensitizers that function to help make the body more sensitive to insulin. Studies have shown that metformin, which is one of the most commonly prescribed insulin sensitizers, has been linked to this beta amyloid plaque production and inflammation which leads to the onset and development of Alzheimer's disease. And this is the route that I chose to investigate to eliminate the connection between this drug and Alzheimer's. For the past two years, I've been doing research at the Penn State Hershey Medical Center College of Medicine in the Neurodegenerative Diseases Lab. <laughs> yeah, it's a mouthful. Throughout my research, I've been investigating a variety of insulin sensitizers that can decrease this detrimental plaque production. I've chosen to investigate both natural and chemical insulin sensitizers that can work just as effectively as metformin, but without the detrimental side effects like Alzheimer's disease. Currently, my research is trying to find a balance between these treatments, and the continuation of my previous studies is showing some promising results. My ultimate goal with this project is to propose an alternative method to manage type 2 diabetes patients that eliminates the risk for Alzheimer's disease in this population. Now, this is no overnight process. For me, I'm two years in and it's only just the beginning. So I urge you to stick with what you love and challenge yourself to pursue greatness, no matter how long you think it will take or how much time you think that you have left. This research, for me, has been time well spent, as it afforded me the opportunity to attend the International Science and Engineering Fair as a finalist. The pivotal moment for me was seeing all of my peers from around the world reshaping science as we know it, and that is what motivates me to be excellent every day. Let me tell you, being surrounded by the highest achieving people your age is one, so intimidating, and two, the most worthwhile experience that you could possibly imagine. Whether you're 17 or 75, challenging yourself to interact with people with similar priorities will help you to grow in some unimaginable ways. From my experience at the International Science Fair, I could not be more proud of the things that this generation is doing for the future of humanity. I would walk through rows and rows of projects proposing cures to cancer or ways to track space debris, even bionic arms that can feel, touch, and react to stimuli. Obviously, these projects took a significant amount of time, and for some, their work was the result of a two to three year study. Now this is time well spent. Instead of spending hours a day on Instagram or scrolling through Snapchat, <laughs> these students challenge the, the stereotypes of Generation Z through their commitment to good work ethic in pursuit of their passions. Our generation has a huge responsibility to take action. Now, in one perspective, it can seem a little overwhelming to think of all of the challenges that we are left to overcome. But after seeing the fantastic work that these motivated 15 to 18 year olds are currently doing all over the world, I have no doubt that we are capable of making an incredible difference in the future. It's only a matter of time. It's not a matter of how much time or how little time that we have but it's how we choose to use our time. So I ask you this, moving forward, how will you spend your time? Will yours be time well spent? Thank you.